Google Earth Studio. It's an amazing web-based animation tool that allows you to show places like Santa's workshop in North Pole, Colorado Springs. And with the help of Google Earth satellite and 3D imagery, you could just zoom out from that spot and show people the actual geographic North Pole of the world. And it also works well with Adobe After Effects. So as a beginner using this software for the last couple of weeks, here are 10 things I wish I would have known from day one when using both of these programs together. If you haven't used Google Earth Studio before, you will need to request access. Just go to the link in my description, click on the little button, and it normally takes around 24 hours to get permission to use it. Once you're in, or if you're new like me, I highly suggest using their quick start projects. There's Zoom 2, Orbit, Point to Point, Spiral, and Fly to Orbit. For these movements, they make it so easy for you. Just type the area you wish to film in the search bar, make some adjustments to your framing, and boom, you got yourself a slick looking Google Earth animation right out of the box. Just hit render in the top right. And I personally like using cloud renders so it can do everything in the background. You can change any of these parameters if you wish and Google emails you when it's done. Number two, by holding the modifier key of Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, I can now angle my camera when I move my mouse. I was adjusting the tilt of my camera manually for a very long time until I figured out that you could hold this modifier key. Number three, to keep your camera facing a specific spot, regardless of where you move it, just find the spot, right click, and set camera target. Now you can move the camera anywhere and it will always face the target. For example, I'll move the playhead and create a new set of keyframes by zooming the camera all the way out into space. And as you can see, the angle of the camera is always dialed in to the target. For number four, here's a couple quick pointers on keyframing. Here I'm setting a camera target on the Sydney Opera House. I'll move the camera to the initial framing, and in order to set a keyframe, you just hit keyframe all attributes. Move the playhead down the timeline and adjust the camera angle again. Remember that I already set a camera target, so when I hit keyframe all attributes, it will automatically snap the camera to my target. Now we have linear movement from point A to point B. If I want to easy ease this, I can highlight them all, right click and hit auto ease. You also have all these other options, but there is some hotkeys to make this even faster. To highlight all keyframes, hit command A on Mac or control A on Windows. And then if you hold command on Mac or control on Windows and click the keyframes, it will automatically easy ease them. Alternatively, you can manipulate keyframes further by clicking on any of the attributes. This initially brings up the value graph editor, and we also have access to the speed graph editor. I can hold shift and highlight multiple attributes at once, click and drag the handles to create whatever curve I'm looking for. If you're looking to bring back the keyframe editor, just right click the timeline and select it. Number five, use the dual monitor view to help you with your camera movements. For example, in a past video, I manipulated the camera going through the streets and it was really easy to do this by using the top-down view and the camera view. Another one that helps here if you need a reference for your altitude is looking at it from one of the side views. So east, west, south, or north. Number six, how to track objects and titles from Google Earth inside After Effects. For this example, I thought it'd be fitting to have the words hit that like button with a little thumbs up icon floating above the Google headquarters in California. You know, since Google owns YouTube, it's a Google Earth Studio tutorial. I mean, you get it. I'll first move my camera to a position looking down on the spot I want to track. Right click, and we don't want camera target this time, we want set track point. I'll rename it to hit that like button, and if I move the camera a little, you'll see the track point down there. Next, I'm gonna click these three dots and hit set local origin, because the numbers in After Effects get really high if you don't. Then go up to file, export, 3D tracking data. Set coordinate space to local, and export. Also, don't forget you need to render the video file too. Number seven, how to get that tracking data into After Effects. Go up to file, scripts, run script file. Find where you downloaded the .jsx 3D tracking data file and hit open. Here I got an error saying it needs the Earth Studio footage, which is okay. I just hit yes and open up the rendered file from Earth Studio that I downloaded. Now things may look a little off at first, but my tracking point is now tracked as a title in After Effects. I'll open up the transform properties and scale it down. You can use the arrows widget here to adjust your orientation, but I'll just go down here and adjust my X to 90 degrees. I'll scale it down a bit more. And for number eight, let me show you how to track objects by applying a thumbs up icon above of the title. I'll drop this thumbs up PNG file to the top layer and this transparent red box you see here is a tracking point layer we imported from the Google Earth file and we can parent our objects to it. So I'll pick whip the thumbs up PNG to that hit that like button solid layer. And at first nothing will happen. And this is because we need to make our thumbs up a 3D layer by clicking here. In order to bring back that thumbs up, I'm gonna zero out the position values in the transform properties. And now just scale and adjust to your liking. 
I will say on this widget, if you hold shift while you're adjusting it, it will go in intervals of 45 degrees. Looking pretty good. I can add a little bit more pizzazz by keyframing in some rotation to the Y of the thumbs up. I don't even know if pizzazz is a word the kids are using these days, but if you want to make this look even more pizzazzier, we can make the elements look 3D with some extrusion and lights. For this, I wanna focus on the title, so I'll turn off the thumbs up for now. Under the text layer, you'll see geometry options. To access this, we need to click change renderer. Change it from classic 3D to cinema 4D and hit OK. Go to extrusion and increase it to your desired length. I'll get to the bevel parameters later, but we need to add some lights first so you can really see their effect. Right click on the timeline, new light. Under light type, choose spot, and my intensity is 150 for now. This doesn't look like much at first, but again, I'm going to zero out the spotlight's position and point of interest values. This puts it near the tracking point, and I want it to face the title, so I'll pick with the light to the text layer, and I'll raise it up so the light is level with the title. Before I go into the next step, I want to duplicate this light so I can light both the front and the back of the title. Duplicate a layer by hitting Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows. Turn off the duplicate for now. Go to the first spotlight and grab the Z plane arrow and move it in front of the title. I'm also gonna move mine up a little bit so it mimics the placement of the sun. Our spotlight's point of interest is still the same as the positional data, but I wanna move it so it looks at the title. So I'll adjust the Z of the point of interest to start pulling the point of interest out. And now I can click and drag the point of interest wherever I want. Turn on that second duplicated spotlight. I'll move around to the back, pull the Z out to behind the title, and we need to adjust the point of interest Z to face the title. Now I'll tweak the placement to taste. Next, I'll add a third light to fill in the darker spots, but this will be an ambient light set to a lower intensity. If I wanna go back and change some of these light options, I can double click the light and change the parameters. With all these lights placed, I'll now go back to the bevel options of my title and change the style to angular. Take the bevel depth, to 10 and I'll adjust the whole bevel to taste. Next, just fiddle with the values and placement until you find what you like. For example, after all these adjustments and the beveling, the letters seem a little crowded, so I'm adjusting the kerning a little bit. If I turn the thumbs up back on and I don't want it to use the lights, go to material options and turn off accepts lights. One thing you'll notice if you're using a .png file like me is if I go to the geometry options, there is no extrusion. That's because After Effects only allows you to extrude things like titles and shape layers. So I need to convert this PNG file to a shape layer to make it 3D. And just so my example covers a .png file with transparency in the middle of it, I added this little circle cuff link. You'll see why here in a second. I wanna do this in a new composition, so I'm gonna drag the .png file down to the create new comp icon. Go up to layer, auto trace. Channel is alpha and hit OK. Highlight the layer and hit U to bring up the mask keyframes we just added. Right click the timeline, new, shape layer. Expand the shape layer and go to add, path. And I'm gonna hit Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows to duplicate as many layers as we have masks. Expand and create keyframes for them all. Now highlight all your masks from the .png and hit Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows to copy them. Highlight all the path keyframes and hit Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows to paste. We can now hide the PNG layer. Go back to Add, Fill Layer. Change it to your desired color. I lost the circle here, so I'll go to Add, Merge Path. Now in this example, it looks like path three is the circle. So I'll move this below my merge path and it appears. But when I convert this to 3D, it will disappear. For now, I'm gonna keep it like this so I can show you how I solve this. I'll rename the shape layer and hit Command or Control C to copy it and go back to my original comp. Turn off the PNG file and hit Command or Control V to paste the shape layer. I'll follow the same steps as I did before with the PNG file, placing the shape layer above the title. But as you should notice, the circle is gone from the sleeve. And this is where I changed the order of my paths and the mode of the merge path to get it to look how I want. I changed the merge mode to subtract and I pulled path one below the merge path. And this worked for me. So if you're having trouble seeing the paths like I did, try reordering the paths and switching to different merge modes. Next, I follow the same steps as I did before by adding extrusion, bevel, and rotation to the layer. The last tip I have is if you wanna add motion blur to the Google Earth video. We're gonna right click the timeline, new, adjustment layer. Move the adjustment layer right above your Google Earth export video file and beneath any titles or objects you've created because it will make them look a little funky. Plus, those types of layers already have the option to add motion blur here. Go to your effects and presets window and search for pixel motion blur. Drag it onto the adjustment layer and you can adjust the shutter angle number higher if you want more motion blur and lower for less. Don't forget to turn on motion blur for your text and shape layers and here is the final render. So if you are new to using Google Earth Studio like me, with After 
After Effects, hopefully this video gave you some tips and tricks to get you on the ground running right off the bat. There's probably some other videos on the screen right now that are algorithmically chosen by the robots that are taking our jobs. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.